shapes and styles, sharing art adventures and happy smiles. Climb aboard and let's get started. Our pets, our pets, we are the our pets. Hi everybody. Welcome to part two of how to draw a cute puppy. How did you get on with the outline drawing of buttons? Whatever you did, I hope you enjoyed it. That's the most important thing. Today, I'm going to show you how to create lights and darks with shading. For this, you will need your 2B and also your 6B or something similar. Let's go. I'm going to go back to my 2B pencil and now that we have our outline of buttons done we're going to do what we've done before and that is we're going to put in a, little, a soft shade all over the body of buttons using our hatching stroke. You remember what hatching is? Lines that run side by side they can be either very light or very heavy depending on what you're looking for in terms of tone. Even though buttons is very light in colour and while you could use the white paper and leave that vacant to create that effect it's still oftentimes a very good idea to put an overall colour onto the surface of the optic, in this case buttons when you're drawing, so that you can rub it back out to create a little bit of texture and even though buttons is both light and very soft, there are some very soft shadows and textures there to, give, to display the idea of the furriness of them. And so when we put an overall shade in it and we rub it back out, we can create that sense of furriness. So I'm going to use my hatching stroke quite loosely and just going to bring that over the entire body. Now, you don't have to stay between the lines. We'll be using our rubber, not just for rubbing out mistakes, uh, but also for part of the technique for creating both texture and lights on what we have, and for blending. The eraser of rubber, depending on what you call it, is uh, suitable for both, and there are many different types of erasers of rubbers that you can get for that purpose. I like to use the hard ones, but then you also have what's known as putty rubber, which is very soft, and it's wonderful for blending and for creating certain different types of techniques in terms of what you're looking for. Now, as you can see, I'm keeping my hatching all in the same direction for now. If I wanted to create something a little more exciting or a little more dramatic, I could by all means go back over that in a slightly different direction. For example, I could go in a horizontal fashion, and you can see as I move down, it creates just a slightly different feeling and a slightly different texture coming through. But I don't need to do that just yet. And if I want to get a little more depth, I can simply go back over it again just to fill in, if nothing else. Now we're going to start marking in. Now that I have the basic shade in, I'm going to start marking in the various different shadows. I'm going to start over on the left ear, because I'm right pod, and if you're right-handed, you might find it easier to start over there. But of course, if you're left pod, or rather left-handed, you might um, want to start over on the opposite side. And the reason for that is so that by coming in this direction, I'm not smudging myself on my drawing too much. Now, I'm staying with the 2B for now, and I'm going to start working in this shadow that you see here on the side of the ear. You can see there's quite a dark shadow. So I'm going to work that loosely, and I'm using my pencil. You can see I'm holding my pencil really far back, so it's not as if I'm writing with the pencil where I hold it up at the point. I'm holding it far back to give me much more freedom and flexibility, and I can see what the point of the pencil is doing. And I'm working in slightly different directions and loosely to create that softness, that freeness, and that bit of texture. And I'm purposely letting it go outside the line so that when you look at the outline of buttons, he's not perfectly neat and tidy. He has this beautiful adorable fluffiness and that's what we're trying to capture that lovely softness and so by going slightly out to the lines it helps to do that there is an edging on the ear so the ear is not completely flat and you can see again that there's a little bit of edging here and so i'm just going to draw that in and it's quite dark at the top show that little bit of darkness there and then back down is this we will be coming back in with our 6B, and a 6B is very dark, and so I tend not to use it too quickly, and I recommend you don't use it too quickly, because it's not as easy to rub out if you make uh, an error, or if you put something in you don't like, you don't take it, and 6B is harder to take out. So it's best to mark your way with your 2D, 2B, and then go back over with your 6B. The ear is casting a shadow down around the side of the head here. You can see it's quite dark where the ear meets the head, and then as the space widens, more light gets in, and the shadow is a little paler. It's not perfectly neat and tidy because of hairiness, so I'm just going to mark that in, let that come down. Now, it comes down to here, and there is the side of the mouth. So here I have the line of the mouth that I did the last time on the video. 
when we're doing the outlines I'm now going to bring that up and I can see if I bring that line up it's just inside the eye so I want that line of the mouth coming down to about here so just to about you can see it gives Buttons a most happy look he's a very happy little puppy now from there just filling that in to that line there in that space then there is some shadow down around the the snout, the nose. So you can see just there's some shadow just around the back of the nose here, with the snout, and then underneath bringing it down into the mouth and sort of um, triangular shaping coming in this way and over here. And that shadow continues on down into the underside of the mouth here into that space. So as before we just mark in, creating a feeling of the steps of where everything is placed. We're not trying to be too rigid and too perfect at this point in time. The softness there. Then we're going to go back, you can see there's almost like a bird shape with wings here or an M shape, a big round shape of shadow just around the eyes. So just mark out that shape there into the middle and then back again on the other side and around that we're going to start putting in some shadow. And once again you can see I'm using my pencil quite loosely, I'm not trying to be too neat and tidy. And you can see the shadow down around that space between the eyes. Just getting that little bit deeper into that space. A little bit more depth here just above the eye. There. there. And you can see how the shadow continues down underneath the eye. And then the same on the other eye here. A little bit of shadow just there and also above it. And by using the two beads, allow me just to test out my shadows before I commit too much to absolute definition. I can see the shaping of the nostrils here, they're quite defined there. Circles for the moment will be more than fine and also here on this side. And I said I can come back in when I'm doing my six bean give a little bit more depth into that. And then over onto the other ear. The same idea of a little bit of depth onto the ear, you can see the side of the ear. And it's a very dark line on the inside of that, I'll put that in later on and a slightly softer plumbing here That's that space once more there's a little bit of shadow down now I think I've allowed myself to go too wide here when I look at this I can see the angle of the side of the face is coming in a little bit more so if I put my pencil along you can see it's coming in a little bit more at a slight diagonal, a slight angle and when I look to the right of the nose or the snout I can see the space is quite small whereas when I look at mine I can see I've left a little bit too much space there so I'm going to correct that, I'm going to bring that in here and then in right there now I never rub out, if I see something I'm not happy with I never rub it out until such time as I've corrected the mistake because I find that if I rub out the line too quickly Nine times out of ten, I put it in exactly the same place again. So when I feel I've done something wrong, when I've made a mistake with a line, I leave it there and I use that as my guideline to correct myself, and then I take out the line I no longer need. And I find that's a really good way of just giving myself a little bit of guidance in what I'm doing. Now, of course, that means that I have a slightly wider gap between the side of the face and the ear, but I don't think that's anything we need to be too concerned about. Just narrow that in a little there, and I think... I've made the ear just a little bit too wide there, so I'm going to just narrow that down again a little bit. And this is really good because it helps me to uh, display to you how things don't always go exactly the way we plan. That's not a problem. That's art. That's drawing. That's painting. It's the journey. And just because it doesn't go exactly the way we plan doesn't mean to say it's not correct. There are many different ways to see both drawing and painting, so never be afraid of allowing things to change or go in slightly different directions to that which you intend. Now, the head is coming out towards us, so it's sitting out over the chest, and so because of that, it's casting a very strong shadow underneath itself onto the chest. That's the next thing we're going to put in, is that shadow underneath there. And again, you can see I'm working quite loosely to get that broad sense of shadow. Here and there, I've been quite higgledy-piggledy, I like that word. Well, two words, higgledy-piggledy. I like that expression, we didn't have that on Planet Fluff. I learned that since I came here to Planet Earth. Higgledy piggledy. You can see the skin is very loose and so there's two big folds here. One, two. And so I'm going to indicate those, they kind of slide into the middle of the chest. And yes, higgledy piggledy. I learned that since we got here. I think it's a great expression. And another one I learned that I'd never heard of before. Thingamajig. I hear 
Molly Bell and, and, and Sean say it sometimes when they're talking about things and they don't quite know the name and say, you know, the thing, thingy jig. And so that's a word I have to use quite a lot because there's a lot of things about planet Earth that myself and Captain Puppy Fluff are finding very different and new. And so we don't always understand and we use the words thingy jigs and higgly biggly quite a lot to explain ourselves. You might not think that makes an awful lot of sense, but be surprised how much sense both thingy me jig and higgly biggly makes when you say it. So, here are a few fun facts about puppies. Puppies are born without teeth. They are also born unable to see, hear or smell. They start to open their eyes and hear after about one to two weeks and smell after about three weeks. As such, they are very dependent on their mother. They sleep a lot. This helps them to develop and grow. They are born in a litter, usually somewhere between five to ten pups and they love being surrounded by other animals and humans. I'll tell you a few more facts in our next video. So that's the next stage. Then there's a little bit of soft shadow here onto the tummy, or belly, whichever you want to call it, just to the side of the shoulder there. And there's a triangular one that shows the space here between, again, the tummy and the belly, or the back leg, the hip area. Just there's that space. I can see it's quite dark. This is the back leg and it's it's in the shadow of the body. So Button's body is creating a shadow onto the back leg there. So once more, put some shadow into that space. And as you're shadowing, continue to stop every now and then and assess what it is you're doing and what you've done to make sure that you're keeping an understanding and an eye on how things are progressing, that you're not just blindly putting in. So it's at this stage, it's important to start thinking more about what it is you're doing and being a little bit more purposeful with the strokes that you're applying. And what we have to the right of this leg, this shadow carries on down, I say to the left on that, left on that leg, to the right of this leg. See what I mean? I get conflustered sometimes. That was another one, conflustered. That's a great word. So many of these lovely words humans have here on planet Earth for things they don't understand. Conflustered, thingy jig, biggity biggity. Wonderful. Then to the inside of the tail. I wonder what words you use when you don't fully understand things. Don't be afraid to maybe put one or two of the words below for me in the comments and tell me words that you use when you don't fully understand things. And maybe I, you can help me to learn a few more things about planet Earth that I didn't know. And we hope to visit lots of different places in our spaceship in Star Racer and see a lot more of planet Earth. And then when we do, we will be taking some photographs and we'll be using those to um, teach you a little bit more probably about places you haven't seen on your own planet and also ourselves and we do drawings of them. Now, I just noticed that that shadow should come up a little bit more, touching off the ear a little bit more into here. So I'm going to just let that come in just a wee bit more there. And strengthen, you can see a little bit of soft light here. So I'm going to strengthen the shadow just around the tummy area there. Since that space. Now, what do you think? Are we getting there with our basic shadows? I think we are. Well, I say we, I mean me, but I'm assuming that some of you are out there doing your drawing at the same time along with me. And if you are, I hope you're finding it easy to follow up as before. If you need to, of course, you can always pause the video and give yourselves a chance to just catch up. Because sometimes I do tend to work quite quickly. And you don't have to go as quickly as me. <clears throat> you can take much, much longer to get to the effect that I have when you're doing yours. You don't have to be too perfect and too rigid. Now, okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put down my 2B and take up my 6B. I'm going to try putting in a little bit of work with my 6B first and see how that works. So, 2B down, and I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to start with the darkest parts. Can you tell me what you think are the darkest parts? That's right. The two eyes and the nose. They are much, much darker. And that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to start with the shaping of the eye on the left-hand side. You can see, again, the eyes are dark. They appear to be dark brown. Maybe touch the black into them. So I'm going to start by just putting in that shaping a little bit. And then it's the eyelid. You can see a little bit of shadow for the eyelid creeping in around there. To that space. Just there. And getting a little bit of shadow coming down here. And then also a little bit of shadow just above that. Linking into this space here. Lovely. I like that. I like that. I like that. And then over to the other eye. Line coming back, and you may remember I was saying to you that the eye on the right, as we look at it, appears to be smaller 
that perspective because this eye is further away from us than this so it looks smaller we know they're probably about the same size but it looks smaller because it's slightly further away and so that takes in both proportion and perspective this perspective is the idea that it looks further away from us and proportion is the fact that we're going to make it smaller and that's what helps make our drawing look real or three-dimensional whereas if we make them both the same size there'd be no sense of distance between them and that then it wouldn't look as though the head's going away from us, which it is slightly towards the right hand side. Not an awful lot. So a little bit of light there, so I'm going to leave a little bit of light just showing through. You can see there's more light in the eye on the right as we look at it than on the left. So the light's catching just on the very top of that. I'm leaving that there for that reason. Let that come down a little into this space. The shadow. You can see the shadow line just there. Once more, a little shadow just above. And I'm going to very gently strengthen some of that shadow there. And also here. That's base. Now, you kind of come down to the nose, and you can see I'm going to start with the nostrils, give them a little bit more strength, and over on the left hand side, and the shaping. Now, the nose doesn't have a rigid shape, so I'm going to just very gently shade in around that. That nostril seems to come out a little here. Just shade in around the top of that just to make it slightly stronger, but you can see the top of the nose is slightly brighter than the side or the bottom of the nose and that's what we want to try and display so we're just going to let this soften in a little here and let that come down a little just bring that down towards this area of the mouth put in the shadows and just you can see i'm wiggling my pencil around wiggling that's another one of those words it seems to mean just doing things very loosely and very freely wiggle wiggle brilliant just putting that down around here just to get that feeling of softness and shadowiness down around this area at the, uh, down the side of uh, the nose on buttons. Now, to strengthen the nostrils again a little bit more, strengthening the nostrils down again a little bit more into that space so I can see them, giving the impression that the top of the nose is slightly rounded. A bit of shadow here, and from there, there's a dark shadow just on the side of the eye, or sorry, the, to the right of the eye there, coming down around the face. That's it. And then we said earlier about the dark shadow inside the ear there. It's a little bit of shadow just to the side of the ear. It comes down that line and it's quite a strong shadowy line that we're seeing. Although it's a line is not even or straight. So we just very gently allow it to turn in and out slightly to convey a little bit more reality into the feeling of what it is we're looking at. It's a little bit here. Now, how's that working? What do you think? Are we getting there? I think we are. One or two slightly, slightly longer. There. Now, down to the mouth. Now, I can see that the point of the mouth is just underneath the nostril. So if I take that point down, that's where I want to be making sure the, the centre of my mouth is starting from. So I'm just going to darken that. And you can see the darkest part of the mouth is that little triangular space just in the centre of the mouth there. Just going to put that in a little bit darker here. And get soft as it comes down, which just gives that lovely, gentle expression onto Buttons' face. A little bit of shadow underneath, not too heavy. Just layering that in very, very gently. Now we have some shadow coming over on the left hand side. Just there. Fill this in. And over here. Now. We're getting there with all those little bits of shadow. So we're now going to come in, just put a little bit more shadow onto the ear here. And then from there, we're going to look at putting in a little bit of shadow on the body. And I might speed up my filming in this part, just as we put in a little bit of the shadow, just to let you see, just as a shadow in here, down underneath to strengthen this a little bit more. So a little bit more shadow just on the underside here. <laughs> Now I'm going to move to the back of the body and I'm going to look at my darker shadows around here and my softer shadows here. And once again, I'm just going to go a little bit faster just to let you see that all happen. And now I've put in some dark shadows here I've touched up on the shadows there, I've strengthened my shadows around the tail and I have also strengthened the shadows just slightly around the front leg here. So now I'm going to take a few moments just to stop, 
to look at my drawing and give myself a chance just to examine the shades that I've used so far against the photograph and make sure that I'm on track to do exactly that which I, like, uh, what I need to do. Otherwise, we can just keep shading and shading and not paying attention to what we're trying to do and we can sometimes then overshade or perhaps undershade. So every now and then, stopping and checking what you're doing is very important and then we'll decide where we go from there. As you can see, my drawing is not exactly the same as the photo. There are little variations and this is okay. And in the same way, your drawing doesn't have to be the same as mine. It's okay to be different. Keep practicing, but the most important thing is to have lots of fun. Okay, so I can see that I need to do more with my lights and darks to finish my drawing of buttons. But I've decided to stop here and I'll make a part three of how to draw a cute puppy. This will give you time to focus on building up the layers and steps in part two. In part three, I will show you how to finish your drawing of buttons with stronger lights and darks. Enjoy your drawing adventures, and I will look forward to seeing you soon with part three. Bye for now. Bye.